And today, it is our great pleasure for having Professor uh, Jim Wang to deliver uh, this talk. And Professor Wang currently holds the Wilmer and Sally Persian Raider Presidential Chair of Mechanical and Material Engineering at the University of uh, Nebraska-Lincoln. And he received his PhD from RPI in 2006, and then worked at Los Alamos National Lab for almost 10 years until 2015. And Professor Wang is very well known for his research on quantitatively exploring uh, the structure property relationship of materials under complex environment using multi scale a theory, modeling, and experimental method and techniques. And his work has led to more than 300 papers. They have been very widely cited. And Professor Wang has received many prestigious recognitions and uh, awards from his career, including the Los Alamos National Lab Distinguished Postdoc Performance Award, the PMS MD, M, uh, MPMD Young Leader Award, International Plasticity Young Researcher Award, and Materials Today a Rising Star Award, and the TMS MPMD Distinguished Scientist Award, and TMS Bram uh, Cobby Medalist Award, which he will receive very soon this March at TMS meeting. And he's a fellow of ASME and a fellow of ASM International. And he also serves on the editorial board of some very well-known journals, including the International Journal of Plasticity and Materials Research Letters. And uh, with that, please join me in welcoming Professor Wang to give his talk today. Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, US invitation to give the seminar in my hand department. I'm very happy to see many of my friends here, <laughs> even during the past three year pandemic. We see somewhere, but we don't have really time to talk. It's a very good chance here we can come back. And uh, so my work here, I will really talk about this called the multi skill understanding of confined volume uh, enabled on uh, neuroplasticity. Uh, this work was really founded by the uh, UEBS uh, with the Professor Amit Misra. We worked together right now, see almost 15 years. <laughs> So this work is, uh, we also uh, applied it to uh, former postdocs and the Guixin and Xu Zhuang. The one was in the Los Angeles, in the UL, one was here with Amit uh, in the mechanics of uh, materials. So the first thing, what is the motivation for this work? We know there are a lot of uh, basic lawyers. Uh, if you try to enhance the mechanical property, you try to introduce second phase, but you take the phase that's the basic uh, one. From all those materials, you can do that. The, the, this eutectic phase could form the different the morphology, fibers, layers, and the spheres, all kind of structures. And another thing, all those structures right now, you could control by control your uh, cooling rate, which means by the thermal treatment, you can uh, further change that part. But even you can do that, but there's an intrinsic property for all this intermetallic phase. In general, intermetallic phase is brittle at room temperature. Uh, unless you go to high temperature, the material can cool the plot deformed by discussions or maybe even the phase formations. But uh, uh, to confine this structure in the very fine scale, we believe we could make those materials plus deformable. In that sense, then you could make the materials strong and also plus deformable at room temperature. But this definitely depends on the, the phase size distribution and also the orientation relation with the matrix. So they come together. So that's all the idea we try to do that. So the basic idea is we tailor max structure to change property. Uh, from our view, we try to prove this idea as a general. It's not a, only for one specific materials. So the current folks, what do we take? One example, for example, this one talk about aluminum copper, you take system, you can form laminar structures. And you also can do this like the aluminum setting can form fiber structures. In the both phases, so far we can prove, first we can prove this, we can really read to the nanoscale, which means this layer could be 10 nanometers, 20, 30 nanometers, spacing also could be reached that range. And that is a very fine scale, nanostructures, nanospacing. If that possible, we can produce struct a structure is strong and also platform. So that's the whole idea. So how we can do this study to deliver a general idea of the concept for this one. We really go through this called the, the most skill uh, modeling and experiments. 
from experiment side, we can make more tools, characterize structures, also do the micro mechanics to carry out the water deformation modes associated with these micro structures. That's one thing. But another thing is really try to understand how you can make more tools deform. So in this, we can link it to some feature from micro uh, scopic characterization that go into the models. The models for this one, we throw this fundamental study from the first principle study to look at the electrical structures, mechanical property, intrinsic uh, uh, property, then link to the microstructure to look at skilled interaction with this one to see how you can do that. Finally, you can reach to the macro scale by using this implement from the atomic scale to predict behaviors. So that's our demonstrate who idea uh, person using this aluminum to copper as example, but the same idea we can apply to other systems. So before we talk about this one, let's get a little bit of idea of what is aluminum to copper. Usually I put these slides later, but yesterday what I think about, maybe I need for this first, at least you get an idea of what is aluminum to copper, this intermetallic. So this structure is called the body center tetragonal structures. So you need to contain the 12 atoms, so the copper and aluminum. The major thing is here, so the A and B is here, is longer, C is short, okay? So this will tell you, for example, if you top of 110 plane versus 011 plane would be different. In the cubic system, that is same, no different. Here is different, remember. So another thing is when we talk about this material in general, these materials in the room temperature is break to the break to based on a reason. The reason is discussion mobility is really low. And uh, for the, the people who did uh, this uh, letting the feeling study, you can see the very local plasticity where you can carry out what type of student code active. But question is how big stress can make this move and how far and, uh, away from that local stress contrition. That's the issue. That's why the materials, even you can see local plasticity does all, all this still break or move so far. So how to identify that part from crystal graphics features in general, what your idea is you have compact plane. You have compact directions. Then that plane could be a shared plane. The compact direction could be your shared directions. That's in general. And another side is from molding side, you can prove which one is more favorable. Okay, particularly for these compact materials, even you talk about the same one one open plane, but one open plane have different composition. And which, which composition plane is easy? That's another thing you have to do. So uh, there's a basic property of these materials. But from geometry argument, you can see these three direction could be short one, that means compact direction could be the vector. And these three, four plane is compact plane could be slip plane. Now we need to prove each discussion on the plane easy or difficult. Okay, so for that study, we have to do this using the, the molding set. For example, I pick this one on O plane, give you an example. So right now, this is the O one direction, this is the one one O direction, which means out of the spring is another one one O direction. Then this takes you all these atomic plane in the one unit, okay? So now, as I said, even you top of one one O plane, do you know the shear on this, or this, or this, or this? You don't know that. But you can analyze this one. For example, this plane, you have more atoms, which means more compact. And this plane only have two atoms is lower, right? Based, but uh, another thing, is you also look at spacing. This spacing is much bigger than this spacing. That means this should be easy here. But this plane has low uh, air density, means that's hard for shear. So now you need to figure out which one really easy. So that's something you can see here. If I do the projection from top view to see, the plane the density, you can see A means all the plane only have A atom or the B atom, how many atoms on the plane. So that will tell you this. So from this argument, you can quickly figure out the easy shear plane could be between the aluminum B versus aluminum C, which means between this one. So this is big space. Another thing you can think about the copper versus aluminum because it has high density. So this is these two planes. <laughs> and the other planes are equivalent to these two planes. You don't have two special planes you need to pay attention to. So for that argument, then you can you can calculate this uh, uh, general stack for an energy plane, the same plane, okay? But you change this copper versus aluminum, other aluminum, aluminum, right? So then you figure out this one. From this one, you can define possible shear directions. From this one, you can define what is various so this one. Then you can figure out all of these aluminum, aluminum B, this plane is much lower, okay? It's easy shear. So that's what you can see. This could be easy shear plane. 
But that's not uh, all data you should have picked to. Another one, when you put the discussion, what it looks like on these two deep planes. So if you do that, think about you have the crystal here, then create a discussion here, but the discussion can play on the plane between aluminum and aluminum or the aluminum two, uh, aluminum copper. So when you do that, then you will get this structure. Here is talk about the discussion, same discussion between aluminum and the copper, okay? So you are dissociated into this one. This one, oh, sorry, this is aluminum, aluminum, this is aluminum copper plane. So this core is narrow, this core is wet. So now go back to the skin theory. Why the core usually have a lower barrier for, for motion? So that means this is easy. This is the analysis. And then I also look at the energy. This linear part tells you the elastic energy. The discussion is the same, no matter between which plane you put, they have the same line energy. But the difference here is core energy. So this one have lower core energy. That's why this still fewer is uh, of the sheet. Okay, so with that one, then you can study at which stress you could make this one. Room temperature, you can keep looking your stress, or the high temperature, you can keep looking stress until this can move. That's how we can quickly know which one is easy, which one is difficult. Unless you really try to identify the panel stress at zero temperature, that's another story, okay? So at least this one, when you do this one, you can see the discussion, how the discussion move for this. It looks very easy, but this happens because the stress already goes to two TPA in the room temperature. And I didn't show all the different sleep system, but uh, here all the data already shows here. The major thing is in this plane, all the discussion have a near expanded core, but even so, the discussion mobility is still near very high stress at this temperature. So this data tells you at this temperature, at this stress, the student can move. If you lower than this one, it doesn't move, at least in your simulation period of time. That means all this can move very difficult. That's why this material is really brittle in the room temperature. Now let's go back to the real study for this uh, using the max structure to enable plasticity. The first thing I will show the experiment data, they really talk about max structure and deformation behaviors. So what we do is uh, we are studying this uh, aluminum two copper eutectic system then using the laser melting, refine the max structure. You can see here is near the pool boundary. Here is the inside region. So if you zoom in this part, you can really refine these materials as a colony. Each colony have layer structures. So that's the key feature. And for the molding, or to understand this, uh, what we want to know is uh, in each form is aluminum in a single crystal. Or uh, the aluminum two copper and alumina maintain the same orientation relationship or the different. So when we know that part, we can easily move forward to look at the model uh, to build up it. So first thing what we did here, for example, if you look at this orientation relationship, if I cross these directions, so that means, uh, sorry, along these each layers, we can look at the misorientation change along this line, and you figure that all, all the, the difference only around one degree. That means each layer, single crystal, okay? And also you can cross this one to look at this again. You also got a similar uh, data is only around one degree. Mm -hmm. And we think this is a single crystal, okay? And further, we identified the orientation between the aluminum and aluminum copper. And uh, uh, this feature in the fine structure, even in the casting structure, core structure, we maintain that same, same argument. But another thing is misorientation. This orientation, we did the EBSD analysis, but uh, also we did this uh, local TM study analysis. Then we look at this orientation region, identify the possible plane. For example, 002 parallel to 002, that means 01, 01 parallel. And also can define which direction parallel for those things. And here is a high rise to show that structure. In this case, you have 001 parallel, and also you have 1 through 0 parallel to 1 through 1 through 0. So that's orientation region. But this, uh, uh, is just a very local equation. When you go back to the EBS data, we can get in the mapping to show all possible correlation here. And the one thing I want to mention, before we do this one, we read the literature, they talk about many, many orientation relationships. But eventually you can figure out, if you think about any two specific directions, let's see three degree deviation, we treat it as the same. Then you can quickly find out all the reported data. Eventually, just go back to these three groups. So these three groups we call this 
uh, uh, these two still maintain, we call the variant of one because all orientation is not same, only different is plane is different. Okay? So this plane is 110, part 110. This is 121, part 111. But uh, everything is the same, exact same orientation. That's really based on how you look at your, your, your expand data. Okay? That's another one. Then we also did the interface energy calculation, which is pretty good. This one is really low. This second is high. And if you go back to the EBSD data, we can figure out the most sample in the refined scale is picking this one. But of course, we can have both average here, but that's the general picture here. So anyway, so this will tell you we have these two specific orientation relationship. We have a well-defined plan, this interface plan. That's the basic knowledge for our model later. Uh, another thing is the mechanical behaviors. Uh, I just quickly show the one thing when we make this sample, we try to understand how this layer structure modified property. Early when we do this layer tap by PVD tap, we only do the one direction perpendicular. But right now you can cut your sample using the a layer pair, vertical, inclined, or the horizontal, right? And after the After the deform, you can see the key feature. <clears throat> For this one, you will see a lot of binding structures. Okay, the binding structure, also you can see the shear along this binding, okay? But in this one, we really see all these shear along parallel interface. Uh, in this case, all, see here, this local uh, uh, local instability, but all of this changed by the reduced thickness, then that is shear by the layers in this fine scheme. So that's the key feature. So the oil is in vertical, we have binding, then we have shear. In this one, the interface slide, in this one eventually is a shear localized along uh, part of this one. So that means we can make the materials shear. But if I compare this in the very coarse one, for example, we also did this uh, ruling test, coarse versus these fine structures. Then you can see here. So in the fine structure, we can see the shear, something happened. But this is coarse material. We don't really shear. We usually break the fibers, the layers. So this is the significant difference. When you make this fine, you can make local shear. When you make this same thicker, then it's just simply cleavage fracture. So that means we can make the material really shear. Shear means plastic, continuous plasticity, right? So that's uh, the thing. Another one is some uh, data shows the mechanical behavior is changing. All the data will tell us you, if you make everything layer thinner, then the material is stronger and also more ductile, at least plastic deformable. That's only a conclusion. I don't want to go through all those things, but that's a key, key, key result for that. So now let's go back to here. What is plasticity when we see the shear? So this is a one image you can see here. There are a lot of shear. Definitely this is by shear. It's not by simply brick, right? And what is the shear plan? So even without doing the high right here, from geometry orientation, we can identify this plan. That's a 0, 1, 1 plan. Look, this is 0, 1, 1. Remember, earlier I talked about when the third number become number, usually this doesn't persist as a sleep plane in the material because that space is different. So this sleep plane was not report for these materials. Okay, that's what I call the first unusual shear on this plane in this data. And another one is, we also see a lot of the shear happens, they form this, uh, the difference from the early one, early ones can you shear on one plane. But these ones continue to share the multiple plane that form the false structure. The full plane was defined in the one to one. Remember, that's another one. So this plane was not a sleep plane for these materials. That's why we keep calling this not conventional sleep plane. It's on your system for that. But remember, one to one have this stacking force. So then you could, you have a quick question: Why in the one one we have continue shear in the one to one you have false? Why the continue continue shear happens? The data is very simple. We did the DFT test for this one. For example, you want to do the 0, 1, 1 plane, you can find out there are two local lima energy points. The formation energy is around this one. The question is, uh, if you conquer this energy, conquer this barrier only as 145. So compare this versus this one, this is really the low barrier. If you can conquer this one, you can definitely continue to share this one. That's why this guy will continue to share on the one plane. But in this guy, we find that they have a three minimum, but your barrier versus is almost the same. Okay, so that's why when you keep shear one, you can create another one. So that you continue fault instead of continue shear on the one single plane. So that's why they form the faults for that system. 
And the more important part is based on that idea, we can rebuild this image that simulates this image. Then compare with with Harris do TM, we can figure out that fault is really a sort of this fault. Here we have three faults, right? But this draw here really lead to this. We can identify which one is really in the shear one. That would be that would be really the first one. This guy, okay. These two numbers almost identical. So that's the basic idea for the experiment part. We know this kind of single uh, crystal accordingly. We have the well-defined orientation. We have two on Euro shear plan. And now we also know the basic deformation behaviors when the loading parallel or the inclines are even vertical with the layers. So that's a basic experiment data. That's pretty much more you can do. I don't know you can do more from the experiment side. Now try to figure out what is uh, behind this one, why they happen in this way. So we go back to the atom scale modeling to study these uh, interface and all the discrete interactions to understand that one. The first thing is to look at these interface structures. The interface are a little bit complicated here. Um, remember, this one artificial we call this one one plane pair to one one o. So what is the one one o plane? One o plane is this guy. That's what I said here. Do the top view will be like this one. And remember all these numbers. The top of each plane have a different density, right? But the first thing I have to mention is if we are simply mapping C and B together, uh, or the A and B together, that can form these hexagonal patterns, common pattern, which means two planes if suddenly collapse into the one plane, and that plane is the same as the one one plane in Golomina. Okay, that's a key feature. So that's the key feature I want to tell you here. That's why I draw all those things here. And also it can tell you A, B versus this one can switch by simple shear one partials. So the two pattern can shear. Yeah. So with these features, then we can think about this interface. You can imagine maybe a aluminum to copper end by copper that have aluminum. When you relax this one, this aluminum layer spontaneously will be sorted into two aluminum layer in aluminum cover. Then your real interface will be here. It's aluminum B versus one aluminum, right? Uh, you can think about maybe uh, aluminum to cover already and terminated by aluminum. Then we start here. Then this can also do that one. Then got this interface, okay? So no matter which one, eventually I got aluminum versus aluminum. That's mm -hmm. the interface. But here you have two, uh, three alumina in low density, right? So another one is a lattice mismatch. Okay, let's mismatch. They will create these misfit locations. So when we do this one, then the, the Stanford, we start these structures. That's only talk about the top layers, but also you need to consider implant translation. So implant translation, you can identify three possible patterns, for example, like this one, or the shift a little bit, or the shift to another one. So top projection will be something like this. We call this no, uh, uh, the uh, B plane versus the A, uh, sorry, A versus A, this uh, Stanford has Stanford patterns. Or you can form these normal kind of FCC patterns, or you can call these Stanford patterns. These three structures have different information entities. That means interface has the misfit patterns, that pattern also associates Stanford structures. Okay, so I will not show too uh, deep, much detail, but this will tell you the interface eventually is not only one interface, it's two planes. We turn first aluminum second and second the third one. And the one third only contains this time for another contains the discussion. So now I just show these two interface mappings here. So this is a structure really looks like. Now what about shear? So when you start to shear these structures, you remember this part is really here. Okay? So all, oh, who feature will start a move? The movement by the interface education propagation. So that means this material's interface definitely have very low strength. Okay, very low strength. That's around 200 by Pascal. Okay. So with that feature, then we look at the plot information. To help you understand this one, this is a model here. This alumina, this alumina, this alumina two copper. But uh, to help you, I also remove the two alumina, then just show the two copper here. Okay, so 
Another thing I can mention, early stage, the surface is flat, perfect plane, right? So when you start loading these modules, then you start see all these steps form. The step means you have skipping glide from the surface trees, right? And all these definitely is along the 110 direction because you're gliding only on 101 plane. But the interesting you can see also shear happens in this direction, almost parallel here. That's the key information. The shear, all this shear is almost parallel to these trees. So if I look at this one, it would be like this one. So the shear always like this. And these directions is nearly parallel to here, 110 directions. That means the discussion nucleation from the interface through the aluminum deposits discussion on the interface. All those discussion in the top view and the bottom, both were trigger. The shear happened here. So that's the discussion interaction between these trigger the trend shear happened this way. So that's a local stress stream curve. And uh, if you look at another orientation, we have the information, the, the, the variance two, like using 001, you will see the similar features. The discussion nucleation from interface discussions, then gliding in the aluminum layer, accumulate on the boundary, and the discussion interaction will trigger shear happens in two companies. <coughs> Here is 211, another case is a 100 case, 111. Uh, so that will tell you the shear in the aluminum two copper is really driven by discussion interaction from both ends, both interfaces. Another one is due to this local shear, right? So if you think about this one, you can imagine something like here, you have the interface here. If the discussion is easily gliding here, this can stop here. This guy will create some field here. In the layer structure, it kind of have two discussion come from here, interaction between here. So this local stress could be very high. And this stress definitely is increased with decreasing the thickness. Uh, we have one early data to show this idea by using aluminum versus <laughs> nitride. If you think about the same model like this one, then you can look at all the average stress, every stress like this, let's say two today. But if you look at the local stress between this plane, between these two along this plane, then the local stress significantly means increase when this layer reduced to the 15 meters. Then it can go to around 60. So that's why the local shear can happen by this way. They fear by this thing, right? But this has another uh, condition. These two shear should be maintain very good continuity, okay? So that's why we have this idea we call the sleep continuity versus discussion action together promote sleeps in that case, which means this sleep system here, Trick another one here. We need this uh, in the second line nearly parallel, and also the shear is parallel. So you can maximize the speed continuity. Okay. When you reduce signals, can increase the local stress. The two facts together that's the packets. Okay. So if you believe this one, then we can go back to the look at the data. So when you took this 001, 001 system, we can look at sleep. Uh, on the alumina also look at the possible sleep. We only list sleep is uh, uh, 0, 011 1, and 121. One. That's what we identify in the experiment. Then you can figure out most sleep parallel is 111 1, parallel to this 211 planes. Okay, that's why check this one. And also in this case, you will have the 211 and also uh, 0, 011. 1, 1. Okay, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. That's really back to this argument. So that's the basic knowledge from the atomic scale, consider this uh, sleep continuity, we believe that's why the sleep happens. Now let's go to the atomic scale. Then we, beyond this one, you get deformation behavior. When you do this one, why the binding? Why do why the shear cracking? The most interesting part is uh, you know, this will have to do the uh, massive scale models. We develop model called the crystal passivity by inter implement find the layer sleep model and the interface shear mode in the system to understand why the material should have behaviors. So what is the basic idea for that? When the layer become really fine, so you have uh, uh, several types of sleep. One is we call the sleep plane non-parallel to the interface, a kind of discussion like this one, some discussion calls. So as a result, if this discussion move, so the sleep uh, create a plasticity through the thickness would be what? Identical. That is the same. 
So that's the first idea. Confined sleep, non-parallel non sleep plane will create homogeneous or the uniform plasticity through the sequence. But you also have the, some sleep plane may be parallel plane in this one, right? So that will position dependence, depending on where you, you have the fragment. Inside that one, we also have sleep near the interface, which means the interface is really weak. So I have to consider this one. So in the model, you will introduce three types of sleep, non-parallel, parallel, and the interface. Okay, three types of uh, sleep system in the system. To consider the interface shear, we can use this basic idea. We can, we know the interface, uh, interface shear associated with specific directions along that easy gliding direction of mean station. That means interface shear has well identified sleep vector and the sleep, uh, uh, sleep magnitude. So you can introduce that part okay, in the system. And that's another part uh, for this uh, CLS, this interface shear part. So with this one, now we can create the model something like this, the model layers, but each layer you can measure in the multiple units, uh, elements, for that we call the inter-region, this region called the center region, because this region is the less impact by the interface shear, but they have the shear parallel or non-parallel. And another region we call the interface domain, this region is really easily shared by interface. Besides this one, then we can build up these models to talk about all the sleep activities tune this model. That's uh, what we do using this non-parallel non one to get identical plasticity using this implement that this inhumanous plasticity. So that's what confirm the model here. So uh, another thing to compare our model, we can also build up uh, a standard model, which means just treat this as the course green materials, uh, no matter how many elements you match, and each point wraps all the plus crystal plasticity. So you can do that, right? So that will represent, for example, your disease materials, maybe the micrometers for the least, that's exactly what represent. So with these two models, the first thing is to identify the parameter. So for the fine scale materials, we, we have a lot of data doing these uh, uh, compression tests. Yes, so that's the uh, experiment data. Then we can fit in our data to define the basic parameter for the sleep. Okay, that's what we do. With this one, now that move forward to look at the materials response. So you can see here, they call CICP model. This is called a standard CP model. The difference, you will see the color. So this represent plus a stream. So the string cross signals is constant, right? But the O along the direction is different. But in this case, you will see the plasticity in the each layer, even the different. Because it's standard CP model. There are no geometry control and constraint. As a result, you can see the features. These are experiment data. Remember, all the model for this one, I never think about it. You should get your data same as experiment. I always think that if you get the feature, that'll be the, the better data. When you get the simulation data, same as experiment data, I can tell you, you cheat people because it cannot be true. Okay. So the key thing here, so for the another thing, this factor, I need to mention a little bit when I see the 10 versus one, and they talk about. Uh, for example, even you reach the critical stress, when you talk about the skin activation, right? Then in the, uh, if you put the one, means you both reach the same uh, stress, critical stress, you will get the same amount of inflation. No, that's one means that one. You go to a 10 means this one has a 10 times difference. For example, you do cover a lower inflation rate. So that means even you reach that stress, uh, reference inflation rate is still lower. So all that will give you the, after instability is then a little bit harder than softening. But if you use a standard one, when you reach a critical point, everything quickly decreases past the softening process. But that cannot be true in our models here, but definitely it will be true for this uh, uh, cost materials. So there are a few points for that. <laughs> is the first thing you can see the bulk instability because these materials all have very low plasticity. That was the idea. That's what we call it, called the elastic buckling. And in this model, you can see that every time when bucket happens, yes, the plasticity in, in alumina, the significant increase, okay, significant increase. Another one you will see after buckling in this model, we can see a little bit of hardening behavior. Then the hardening due to this incompatibility. One has lower activity, another one is high activity. But in the course model, you will see another one is softening later on when soft. The softening happens with the binding reading you trigger the plastic happens in the uh, aluminum cover. I will show that soon later. 
And in the CP mode, you will see the very small bucket stream, but overall, it should be a very quickly softening process. So now, if I look at this uh, uh, string and uh, the distribution in this case, this is a CSAP model, because in this one, plasticity is through the signal stream, right? So that's why the one curve. You can see the most plasticity in aluminum is happens in that domain, which means those two, okay? The banding part has very low plasticity. But if you look at the plasticity in aluminum two copper, the most plasticity happens in the banding part, was not in this part. Okay, now if you look at standard CP model, since the plasticity in the dependent thickness part, so this part is bigger, this part is here. So you have three, but the all the average one, you try to reach this one, you kind of feature is similar, but all these strings are much bigger. So you have a huge plasticity development in the aluminum, but a very small plasticity in aluminum to copper. Because here you can, we just compare the plasticity in aluminum to copper, this one in the CSP CP model, you will see the huge plasticity go all bigger than this one. And another bigger one is happens in the binding part. But here, you see that string. The big part was not in the binding part. It's here in the middle, even that part. It's just the whole screen model. That's what the uh, data. So definitely this is not true for these really fast structures. And another thing is uh, we can look at stress uh, for that part, because when we talk about the bus strings uniform through the signals, that is the mean time to tell us the elastic depth is in home through the signals. Okay, so you can look at this uh, the elastic stress uh, along the x directions. You have three elements. So the stress is even this average stress. All these materials are under the compression, right? But if you look at this, uh, the standard CP model, what do you see here? Yeah, this is a compression, but it's a very small compression. Here's a huge compression. So that's uh, balance all the loading part. So this tells you really soft here, it's less controlled by that. And another thing is possibly the stress in the lumina. When you're in the, this model, you will see that there's a very interesting point here and here, the first layer and this one. So which means this point versus this point, the local stress is tension. That tension means you could have the crack in your lumina instead of crack in your lumina to cover. Then you can ask if that true. The good thing is we, we have another data, early data in the alumina telemetry when you do that imitation, we will really see the crack in the alumina was not in the telemetry. The reason is due to that geometry constraint issue. Okay. All right, so I will not uh, uh, mention this and more to data. Uh, another thing is, if that is true, then we can look at the signal dependence, change the each layer thickness. That's what the model will tell you with decrease, uh, increase layer thickness, you make this in the bit happen much earlier. So that's what you see. The, all the data looks like you know, this, some experiment data. What I said is not quantitative. Okay. Is that all? Answer is no, because we still need to consider one more thing. If you think about it, you can tailor your interface become much bigger, bigger, weaker. See, I have very strong fiber, but uh, this kind of non whiting with the matrix, when you do compression, what happens? Extreme case, right? So that idea means if you really can solve all the weak your interface, is this instability earlier or the delay? So the answer was tells you if you do that, then the, if the interface become weaker and weaker, instability happens early and early. So this is for the soft hard material. And with this idea, we also go back to check early data regarding the model layer. We do the single uh, metal measures. We also prove this most of metal metal interface is weak. When you go to that idea, we also this is also have the instability, but this instability was not called a button, it's really called a, uh, the king, double king. Okay, the double king is because interface locally shear, then the structure instable happens. That's why. So in that case, you also can find out the same idea when you weak your interface, that instability happens early. And if you look at the second dependent. That's another idea. Is when we increase layer thickness, that this instability will be disappeared. This is, you can easily understand. This is really very uh, sing, single layer put together. is kind of the single crystal materials. There's no instability to share by that way. Okay, that's quite easy to understand. So, so that's it. So um, uh, another thing is that uh, currently um, I'm working with uh, Amit. We are doing another type of materials. It's using the coherent system and then the fiber structure. 
That's the same idea, but this is a, that's a deeper story. The first thing, this is not Lee anymore. This is the fibers. So the discussions, networking will build up. Maybe the string honey. Uh, another thing, since these fabric cooling system, usually you don't think they can shear, okay? Then eventually will trigger a fracture. Is this fracture can propagate or suppressed by nippers? So that's something we are working on. So the whole idea is very similar. Multi school experiment and model together. I hope we can develop the whole story for that. Um, I think I will stop here. Uh, the last stage is okay, yes. That's how I would call model school. Thank you. Talk. So I was just wondering about the tension behavior. So the, you show the compression at the earliest and late stage of the presentation. I just wonder if you can do the tension and we see the same. Um, yeah, you know, uh, for here, we, we need the tension for uh, alumina silica. For the alumina copper, uh, at that moment, when I work on this one, we didn't do that. At least a small sample, we didn't do that. We do that. And uh, I believe, I believe it will be similar because uh, you really can uh, make a sample as what I showed earlier, really parallel all those. And I believe that's a very similar. The only difference may be hardening rate could be different because you less uh, a geometry control uh, constraint. That, that's possible. So, uh, personally, I don't think that's a big problem. Mercedes definitely will show on, uh, on its topic attention uh, versus compression. But the uh, uh, basic idea for the plasticity and the string hardening is follow the same. Thank you. 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 When you when they fit the potential, I don't know how they get, how much uh, they get. Uh, uh, wait a second. Slide <coughs> <coughs> here is DFT. I like like the dislocation uh light or GSM compare. Oh that part. Slide there, so compare with DFT result and the uh, oh we didn't. Uh, we didn't. Um, um, uh, basic elastic property, um, we compare the potential, that's no problem. And for the gamma surface, um, the early data, what we did is just for conventional sleep plan. Uh, we did the uh, uh, MD study. We, at that moment, we didn't do the DFT. Okay. And since we later on, we find out this shear was not in that plan, that's why you go back to this part we have to do. Yeah, that's a good thing um, to double check. Um, uh, that situation with the gamma surface in DFT is still show the signal features. Uh, personally, I think it's a, a worry be because uh, we did the gamma surface by using uh, MD to look at this one, this point, uh, even in the conventional sleep plan. Yeah, so we did those things. Um, I didn't show some other results uh, for these kind of compounds or the this one. That's another very interesting thing. Is, uh, I call this uh, this one core instability. And uh, why I call that because uh, if you look at the uh, core defect mechanism in the perfect domain versus near the core, domain, the formation is significantly low. That means the screen core can absorb all the generated high density vacancies. There's one experiment people look at this one in the room to copper. When they do this uh, uh, high temperature loading, then they start the binder shear. Then that shear can quickly form a lot of voids, big voids. And uh, we we have one, I think we have one paper also showed a similar idea. The one of the discussion parallel that puts. In that case, the skin can quickly climb to meet again across many planes. The reason is point the information near core is really low for the for those kind of points. And the same idea we also test is when in the aluminum nickel, nickel three aluminum, 
and several different phases. And you can see my idea, that data was not published yet. And that's another story for the intermetallic phase. My understanding is um, uh, because all these structures itself was not uh, uh, low energy concentration. So the point data, the local bond can switch whatever to create this effect. And the board can quickly even develop into the non cesium uh, loops, drugs. It's a really good that reason. So I didn't show that here, but uh, <laughs> you can show that. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have two quick questions. The first is that you show that the layer thickness yes. is on the strands. So yeah, the trend seems to uh, be making sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the thickness and are the strands. But I, I assume there also must be some critical value, uh, which you see a decrease. So far, we didn't see that because uh, uh, this is not a like, uh, like the PVD. PVD, we can really control layers from several 10 even to the several nanometers. But this one right now, I think for the, the maximum minimum we can reach around the 20 to 25 round. So in that we didn't really see that yet. Maybe you need a further uh, def, uh, refine the signature. So in but general, you extend, maybe I believe 10 nanometers yeah. below. So that is a, a very uh, classical argument. For example, if you can imagine, I only have one nanometer, one nanometer. <clears throat> what is one nanometer means is three layer atoms. So they form this all structure definitely will be uh, uh, coronal structures. This is a highly uh, internal stressed structure. So now that this can when nucleation, what happens, for example, one region tends to have one compression, right? Fully coherent. Uh, in the fully coherent tangent part, maybe you can form this region can quickly block by this one. Maybe you can spontaneously cross. So I think, uh, yes, that will go to the softening part. So you can really go that. And so another thing you can imagine if this in form, they form always a loop, right? Loop in the two dimensional view, that's the depth. So we have the core, what is core dimension? Core usually is on one to one to two nanometer, one nanometer core. Then if layers one, the two, these two dimensions, what it looks this one, it's already across the whole samples, the layers. I think that's a reason. Yeah. So my second question are related to, I mean, it's a, your presentation is very nice, but it seems to be uh, based on the interface with very well-defined crystallography. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Can you comment on what if, say, you have sort of like a, a more first crystal interface on that? Yeah, um, and we did many studies with this one. In this case, we just had to show this cool idea, right? Simplify. In reality, do you think you have a well-defined interface? No. Almost never, right? Particularly if you do the mechanical treatment to create this one, it's really the mess. But that mess doesn't uh, uh, affect your argument. The reason here, even the mess, the material still try to minimize energy, the interface, by rearranging the interface from a local clean, local high defect density. Okay. Another thing is if you uh, have deform deformation created, you can have a local chemical mixing, right? So atom could be switched near the interface, maybe just for the first layer, maybe go through a several nanometers. That's all that happens. So that region property will be different, but all oh, the picture is still there. So you can reduce, you make your interface, for them right now, you look at your shear. The ideal shear is very low, right? But now you have a lot of pinning points because due to this amorphous domain, maybe some defect, the discrete domain, they change one, but they don't change your, uh, uh, intrinsic property. When this guy can start to move, shear, they can cross this one. It's just in that place. Mm -hmm. So um, from my view, I, I think, yes, uh, that part of where mega material may be a little bit stronger. We have some paper recently with my former students. Uh, intentionally, we created this mixing layer in that uh, interface. We see the material's uh, strength increase. For them, in the initial is a uh, uh, harness is too deep, uh, sorry. One is around the two GP, another one become 2.3 GP. Yes, a little bit. So I don't think this is a major uh, factor. Yes, they do affect yes. But another thing, we also look at the uh, radiation for that part. They do change uh, another thing. For example, if you have the mixing part or they have the kind of amorphous domain, uh, probably maybe one nanometer like that. That means that a region is kind of disorder, right? Mm -hmm. So what does radiation do? Make a disorder, more disorder, or make a disorder become order. 
the first event is make a disorder become more older. It's something like amorphous virus radiation happen, what happens, start a nucleus crystal. So they make this local become older there, they still go back to the perfect interface situation and start general discussion point defense, make the voice. So you de delay a little bit, but they don't really significantly change the whole story. Yeah. Thanks, Sherry. Okay. Uh, did you by any chance have a chance, uh, by any chance have a look at the hardness values or uh, corresponding to the compressive and tensile strengths? Like, are they really consistent with the Tabor's equation? Like, sorry. Um, did you yeah. ever did you ever measure the hardness, nano indentation hardness uh -huh. values at? Different locations of the nano region. Oh, you mean the harness, right? Yeah. Yep. And I think, yes, uh, when we do these materials, definitely the multiple point to average. Yes, we do that. Okay. Um, I'm presently working with um, the aluminum silicon system, and we have like two different orientations of the eutectic fibers. Um, the hardness, the strength values are comparable. However, we are seeing like a huge difference in the hardness values? Um, I didn't fully get your question, but uh, I guess, okay. So for the layer structure, for the layer structures, um, um, for example, when we have these samples and when you do the test, that if you do the nano indentation, right? So the, I said it's calling is several, several tens of uh, uh, micrometers. You can measure many points. Uh, you, you you never have real chance here. Mary is a perpendicular as a vertical, it's all the average. Okay. I think in your fiber structure, we have the same situation. The same situation is random, right? You just take enough data to average one. I'm not sure did I get your question. So somehow asking if you measured hardness. Uh -huh. Would it be a factor of three of the compressive strength that you showed? Oh, the ratio. Oh, uh, okay, good. And classical people usually in the coarse grain material, we think about this the ratio around three, right? And you have to understand why they have three, right? They have assumption, there's uniform deformation, right? Uniform plasticity, there's no loop hardening. So that's why so medically give you the ratio is nearly three, right? But uh, in the uh, real materials, many materials, when we do this one, we couldn't really reach that uh, condition. And particularly if you have the complex uh, max structures, I believe you never have a chance to reach that one. So that means the ratio definitely is not three. Right? So what is the number? You don't know. We roughly use three. For example, early when we do the multi layers, we figure out the most of data follow 2.7. <clears throat> And when people do the porous materials, then you suddenly find out this ratio is one, right? So the coarse grain polycrystal materials nearly three. That's only I can tell you. For any other materials, I don't think you know the number. The number only comes from final data. Then you figure out it's nearly because <coughs> the three is based on homogeneous plasticity. The microstructure complex will give you the non-uniform plastic deformation. That's why you don't have this data. And you can also ask your same question. If I have polycrystal materials, if I do the harness test, I can test in the center of the grain or test in the nearest grain boundary. What is the number difference? So you know the number in the grain boundary is much high. You think this region is really plus default resistant compared to this guy? It's no. Because it's going to use the nucleus in the boundary. So why you have this? Because it's a local blocking effects. But here you have built a discussion, then you build a network strengthening. So that's a different, a different uh, process, okay? So um, the same as many people talk about what is yield important. See, oh, 2% strength yield important. And this is a condition, right? We don't really use that 2% as argument. Just uh, sometimes in engineering argument, we use that number. For the material research, from my view, this is the first uh, uh, reference, but you don't really need that name. You know, there's no physics, right? Okay. Yeah, so building on Pastor's question about the uh, perfect crystalline interfaces, compared to maybe amorphous regions, 
Um, what, did, what would you, how would you comment if there was some impurity involved that altered the crystal interfaces or the crystal orientation relationships? Um, I'm not uh, fully understanding your questions. Yeah, so you, you talk about like perfect crystal yeah. interface between those, um, and maybe there's some disorder there, but what if there's completely different orientation relationships or totally different crystal planes that were you know, equal, you know, based on some impurity content? Oh, okay. So um, to create the interface, uh, in principle, there are two ways to create this one. So one we usually talk about is called the thermodynamic driven. In that argument, usually the orientation was defined by minimize your interface energy, okay? So in that case, that's why the most materials, if they form eutectic, they have well-defined orientation. It's not any plane you want to put together, you can put together. That's one thing. Another one, you can do this kinetic driven interface, for example, the many cases that people do severe plasticity, ruling, bounding, whatever, you create a lot of boundaries. In that case, the boundary usually they form based on continuous uh, plasticity. The reason is both sides will deform, right? When they deform, they will start to rotate, they make the uh, plastic deformation easily continue propagate. That's why they create a specific uh, boundaries. That boundary usually maintain uh, the compact direction parallel. So in that case, that's different, but it doesn't matter which one. So when you form this boundary, right now the boundary can go further to relax the structures. For relaxing structures, that's why the most cases we will see the boundary start to form the faceting, no matter what temperature is always doing that process. It's a chemical potential reducing process. That's why they always do that. So in that case, in general, no matter if the, the nanogram or cold screen, from my view, always boundary try to form local component structures. Okay. So then you think about another issue. Many people talk about how I pin the boundary by introducing the, the, we call the yeah, a boundary complexes, right? So make this other uh, solute atom or something else makes the boundary more complex, right? In that case, uh, some system you start to form second phase. Some case you form some unique phase, you never see that phase, right? That just due to the local composition issue. And could be we call it disorder, we call the new phase, whatever you call is a chemical argument or the local or bonding argument in this case. And uh, I, my, 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 if you talk about these uh, pure metals, uh, usually we talk about these called this uh, heat mixing positive. That means kind of talk about a little bit of sharp interface. If you give enough time, separate, then form sharp. If it really is a lower, then you start to form the second phase near boundaries, right? So it's a, a very complex uh, issue, really depends on your material system. It's hard to see what is good or bad. So I hope that will help you. Okay, you did one last question. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, why did you guys you know, prefer working on the laser processed metals instead of like tin paper? <laughs> good question. And that would be have to bear to which guy support us to do this. DOE BS. When we talk about BS, there's always a problem. And some people, I, if you have time to look at all the BS uh, from the project, BS, okay. The so many projects you look at this, what? Why do you do this? Well, 100 years ago, people work on this. When well, you still work on this, right? Many times I got the same thing. <laughs> because you misunderstand. So some cases, the people really should develop materials to see, oh, this is good, what do we need? Some cases, we really try to understand what makes that good, right? or makes this worse. We don't care, finally, this is good or worse. We care what caused this. So for that argument, then we study this very general problem. For all the materials, if you think you have really hard phase, if you believe you refine your hard phase, it can make everything good. It's a general problem. And how you can make this? Because using this is a method that can do that. That's it. It's, it's, not a, it's not like the people doing the, the additive manufacturing, we are using it, we can control something, something. No, we don't. We just because this can, can create this uh, faster cooling, we could use that to tailor my structures. That's it. That's my answer. And you hope that is same as I mean, was thinking. Yeah. So it really based on your purpose and which guy found you. Okay, so in the interest of time, uh, let's thank our speaker one more time. If they have more questions to ask, I believe you can find is they uh, Professor Wong's contact. Yeah, thank you for coming. So, uh,